Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled today are soprano Judith Cirilla and author Christy Shaw. Christy Shaw, the founder and CEO of Serenity Media, is a producer of indie films and an author of a new novel. So Christy was born and raised in Taiwan. She graduated from UCLA earned an MBA at Pepperdine University, and studied film at NYU. Christy, your family was involved in government events and, and uh, entertainment in Taiwan. How did you uh, be a part of that? Um, I've always loved films and art. So anything that's creative, and, um, art, music, films that I just it's my passion. I love going to events and um, any art affairs with family and friends. So what were they doing in Asia? Because their, um, whatever they were a part of, I don't know exactly what they were a part of. Tell us what that was. They are involved in media, newspaper, TV. And I see. Mm -hmm. And so you picked that up along the way? Um, I don't, I didn't really pick that up till very late until I'm done with school. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well and then how did it influence you? Because you, you went to, to uh, UCLA, how, how did you get to UCLA? Well I went to UCLA, I didn't study film, I study business, I study East Asian studies, uh -huh. um, the traditional. But that was easy for you, wasn't right. it? Um, <laughs> yes, yes or no. It's, it's not really my passion, you know, I'm doing it because of the norm, of the form that people tell you, go to school and get a great degree, so therefore you get a good job. Then why so, did you come to UCLA? For that reason. You, of, you didn't want to go to an Eastern college? Um, no, no, I, well, I, I liked UCLA, you know, it's such a great experience. People, the campus, it's, it's amazing. Um, and what I'm trying to say is, growing up, I love art, you know, I'm, I'm an artist at heart. I draw, you know, I make paintings, and I love music, I love dancing, I do just anything that's um, art, I mean, in art. So I went to school, it's more for the culture and for my family, and how <laughs> the culture, the Chinese culture or the Asian family, you know, telling you to, to go to school. I graduated from a great school, so mm -hmm. um, at that time I felt I was doing it for my parents, for what everyone tell you, you know, tell the entire, I mean, even till now, you know, you, you hear the authority or the teacher, you know, telling you to, yeah, go to, go to school and get good grades and right. do this and that. So that's what happened. Had it's, your family been to the United States to school? Had they come to school yes, here? Oh, yes, they had. So you did have somebody to follow. Yes, my parents, they travel around the world. I mean, especially my father, he's a, he does business, so he goes to Europe and and Asia. So had you come States. here as a child? I, yes. So you, and I fall in love. I, I mean, you it. were used to, you, you found something that you liked. Yes, then. I love the freedom, I love the weather, Los Angeles, and I love Disneyland. When I first <laughs> come to the States, I went to when Disneyland. When you were young? <laughs> yes, when I was young, when I was eight. Or but now it's your home. Mm-hmm, I, I consider it home. Uh, Pepperdine was a great school. You went Amazing. to Pepperdine. Yes. Beautiful campus. So beautiful. It's, you can see you can see the ocean. I was, you know, in, in the classroom. And then, 
Is that when you decided that you should be a filmmaker and you went to NYU? Because that's a fantastic school too. I went to, well I was studying acting. I was taking, also act, well, I was taking acting classes on the side. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I just know I wanted to do film and I was making short films. I, I was also acting in my short films. So yes, that's when I, when I moved to New York. So, so you've made a lot of independent films, but first of all, were they made through your media um, company, Serenity, what's it called? Serenity, Serenity media. media Group. Um, the, the short films and independent films, that's before I started my company. I started my company three years ago. Oh, they were before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. see. And I was doing it with friends of mine. And, and why did you start the company? What does the company do? My company is a production company, and the content that we do is uplifting, positive, and inspiring. Uh -huh. So the reason why I started the company because I feel there's a lack of positivity and entertainment. So I want to create positive stories and projects for the world to see. Well, you you did do some independent films. I think mm -hmm. we're going to come back to that positive thought that you're okay. saying because I think that's the journey of Rainbow Island which is the novel that you wrote. But before that, you've worked with like very top actors, Billy Zane, Roy Scheider, Martin Short. What kind of films were those? It's, uh, we did one was Dorothy Voss. It's an animation. Mm -hmm. It's a friend of mine, the package. Well, he started the whole thing together. They're amazing, the company they're doing. Uh, and the Scheider film? Mm -hmm. That was it? And Billy, the Billy Zane And that film? was for Dark Honeymoon? Mm -hmm. It's a, a, my friend's production company. They produced it, and I assist in it. Oh, I see. And then, and that's how you started. I Is started that? learning experience and doing the hard work until ah, now. I see. Yeah, it doesn't really just you get just rise through. Okay, now you have a company. That's no, you right. You gotta do the hard work. Right. So, nice. so the, the Serenity Media Group is going to be a production company. It is a production it is. company. It's uh, happening. We have projects in development, and we're looking for more projects. And and you've gone with this with your company all over. You've been to Cannes. You've interviewed people in Cannes. You've done. Uh, are you looking for films at that time when you go around the world? I was at the same time promoting my book and people pitching me, sending them their projects and ideas to see if there's a possibility to co-produce and co-finance co together to make films. Because my company, we want to do films that, that are appealing for global market. So it's not just for the Asia or North America. We want it to be globally relevant. And how does it become globally relevant? The content. It all depends on the story. Yeah, what, what kind of stories? Are you looking for? Well, I'm, I'm, real, I'm very specific. Yeah. First, that's what you I have thought. to qualify the positive, inspiring, and uplifting. It has to be that kind of a message. story. Yeah, it has message. to. I don't do anything negative, polit politics, no, or anything sexual, or nothing. Nothing. No, no scary movie. I hate <laughs> scary movie. I can't stand it. <laughs> I'm so glad Halloween's over. Um, um, yes. Yeah, so. Anything positive, uplifting, romantic comedy, ah, I see. animation, family, children. Oh, um, so you there's a big gamut. Fiction. Science yes. fiction too. Yes. We yeah, because do. in in a way, the journey in uh, Rainbow Island is a kind of a fantasy fiction, right? Yes, it is a fantasy. Adventure. So, so you said you were in Cannes pitching this, mm -hmm. um, or well, doing book signings. Yes, we had a press conference. And tell us what journey. Uh, in Rainbow Island is. Journey it's, 2. Journey 2 Rainbow Island, that's what we hope um, we want. Well, it's about a girl, she's 11. Her name is Yuning. She's from Rainbow Island, which is this paradise, heavenly, beautiful place. And did you write it all? I did. Because the heavenly, beautiful place, the adjectives are so flowery. There are so many adjectives on every page. I wondered how you found so many. <laughs> oh my God, no, that's my friend. He called me yesterday from Germany. He said, oh my God, I have your book. Germany, uh, Amazon Germany is amazing. They deliver before everyone else. She said, Christy, where did you find all those tree and did flowers? It? I had to bring my, I have to open my dictionary too. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the hibiscus are all in different colors, but also, and the stones that, the, that she wears and that mm -hmm. they, 
So I wondered where you found all these I adjectives, think, especially time, not of English first language, right? No, it's, it's not your first it's language. It's not my first language. Well, I was. I think at that time I was going to Hawaii a lot. I was ah, pretty much living there. Really? I spent a lot of my time when I was writing the book. I spent a lot of my time in oh, Hawaii. That was a great was inspiration. Nature. I was in nature, and I was in uh, you know with the trees and yeah. the ocean, dolphins all the time. So. Talking animals. Talking animals. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so the story. Go on. She's living in this beautiful She's in this oasis. She's this beautiful oasis. Yes. And now she has to venture, or ventures out to the dark world because the sacred seven stones is being stolen by the dragon, by the dark force. But the dragon in the beginning gets created. And there's a certain way that the dragon has to get created. I'm not going to say what the story is. But then he reappears and, and he steals the stones. Right, he steals the stones and he kidnapped the rainbow children. And now she has to, she's the leader of, the, uh, of the, her island. So now she has to go out to different journeys. So each chapter is a story, short stories. So she goes to different places and on, how on she, her journey. on her journey, and how she, over, she faces tremendous challenges because she's found a, a pure a pure place that she's very pure she's right. very pure and she's never experienced jealousy danger she doesn't even register so when you go in when she goes to that real world she has to wow why is the world why is people acting why this way right? why the, so she, she doesn't register so she faced a lot of challenges and how we we go through her journey how she overcome those challenges through her innocence, purity, and uh, love. How long did it take you to write it? Eight months. Oh, that's not so long. Yeah, I was just focused that time. I was just writing. So each writing. one was like a short story, boom, boom, boom. Did you have it? Did you make an outline? Um, no, I actually it was like all together. It was like one, one big piece. And, and what was I the process? To, did you use a computer or did you? No, I hand wrote it you hand on my notebook and I had to transfer it to my computer. Oh, you it's did? It's all handwritten. You can see my, I, it's still in my house, it's like stacks of notebooks. And then would you just go out on the beach and write or would you have a certain place that you had to go and write in Hawaii? No, I was actually writing at home and I would travel to Hawaii. Um, oh. On vacations, but I was at home. I was just home and oh, writing in my room. Then how did you find who published it? Ben Bella. Ben books? Bella and it's Perseus distribution. How did you find those people? Or my how did they find you? Actually, my agent picked them because we're we're having we're really fortunate. We have many publishers that are interested, and we decided to go with them. Cause well, tell us about the cover art because it's beautiful and you said you were an artist so you either designed it or picked it yes yeah, like all the artwork in there it's i i visualize it and i i drew a little bit but some um, amazing artist ralph he did it what's his name ralph i can't pronounce his last name okay <laughs> volts volts <laughs> yes he's working on my other project right now but so um, can this be a series? Yes, we're doing a second book. I'm writing a second book right now. Second. So third. it'll be continuation of continuation. Uh, Yun Ying? Yun Ying, yes, Yun Ying? perfect. Yun Ying? Yes, means serenity and And she love. can be ser uh, serenity and love, and that's the name of your... My company. Your company, Serenity. Um, could it be a TV series? Yes. Yes? <laughs> yes, we are. You, you read my mind. Yes, we are in the process of developing. And what else? What else? Uh, video games, games. Video games. That we're really excited. You actually can play on your iPhone now. It's ready. You can buy on this your one. This one is ready. Mm -hmm. The Apple app, on our game, based on the book. And so you just go to Journey to R Rainbow Island, and you can play that game. You go to your iPhone and um, the Apple app. You just put Journey to Rainbow Island. I think it's called Yuning Archery Challenge. We're doing. This is the first game. We're developing the second game. So you can just go. It's free. You can just download it and how just start did, playing. How did you know how to do that? Well, I have. That's another whole production. I have a team of people in, involved doing the video games. So they're developing virtual world and all those apps. Okay, before we leave, I have to find out if this was autobiographical. <laughs> do you feel like you're uning? Uning? A little bit. So I feel I'm still. I'm quite. I can. St I'm still quite innocent. I would say. You know. I. I guess. Um, like her. You know. I sometimes it's. 
it feels odd to me. Oh, why is people acting this way? You know, why right. don't we? I mean, the world is abundant. Why? Why? You know, why? You know, is there wars and why? Why are we doing this? You know, so. So maybe that voice came very easily to you. Yes, it did. So we will look for your app and we'll look for the book Journey to Rainbow Island. It's just out, isn't it? We're very excited to yes. have it. And thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Don't go away. We'll be right back with soprano Judith Cirilla. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here with singer Judith Cirilla, who's appeared in leading opera roles. She's toured with opera a la carte, singing Gilbert and Sullivan. She's appeared as a soloist with symphony orchestras and performed lead roles in the musical theater. And um, you may not have seen her, but She's behind the scene in radio, TV, and in films. Her participation in commercials, what else, it goes way beyond, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> what do we do? We have this voice, right, Judy? <laughs> That's it, and you hear this voice. I'm actually a very high soprano, <laughs> and quite a lot in the old Disney films, I'm always the... Oh, you're very high. Yeah, yeah, I'm usually the last really high note. So how did you always feel? I mean, you were so on stage in the opera and musicals, and then here you are behind the scenes, too. It's so much easier. <laughs> oh, gee, no makeup? I don't have to worry about, <laughs> about how I look. Yeah. It, it, I, I enjoy uh, just making beautiful music, and you just take it where you can find it. So we call you a musician, we call you a soprano, a singer, an actress too, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually started out as a dancer. Oh, and a dancer too? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you have to have all those things, don't you, when you're on the opera stage? Absolutely, nowadays especially. And musical comedy as well, or musicals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to have every aspect in one form or another, which is why I really like doing church music. <laughs> oh, here we are. Did you always want to be a singer? Always. And when you started, where? I mean, were you in, in uh, elementary school, high well, school? I, I say I started as a dancer. My mom started me dancing when I was, I was like three years old because oh. I was pigeon toed. Oh, so they wanted you to have a turnout. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, so as a dancer, when I was, when I was fourteen, the. Uh, organist at my church where I grew up was uh, the musical director of the LA City College Opera Workshop oh. and they were doing a mall in the night visitors which has a shepherd's dance in it so he asked me to do the shepherd's dance oh. so that was my first opera that was your first break mm -hmm. really right yep. on stage he became my voice teacher and was there any from there. anything in your family was your mother a singer not not in my immediate family my my cousin, Ron Haggerty, was, uh, if anyone remembers, Sky King. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, Sky King on the radio? It, it was on TV, uh, you know, As in the in 50s. Yeah, yeah, and Clipper was Ron Haggerty, was my cousin, and, and he, he, he had to leave when the war started, so. Did he inspire you in any way? He always was in in my in oh, my was? brain was yeah he, he? and his younger brother then was also an actor he did stuff at the glendale center theater so i then did stuff there as well when you you, you were on stage as what how 13 years old or whatever it was then did you start going to school and training your voice i let's well, say this my organist at church became my voice teacher yes. and so then I continued doing stuff while I was in high school I continued doing stuff at LA City College and what about college and then you went to college and, yes as and well? then I just went to Glendale College but meanwhile I was I was already doing uh, operas you were already doing opera so mm -hmm. is that where you got your start there or in a chorus or no I I, I did I did choral things in school just because that was what was available, but with the operas, uh, I was, I always got to do little things, you know, the little compromario roles, um, and I was on stage with some really great people during my teenage years. Do, do you think you were learning at the always, time? Always. You were. Always. Just taking it in, seeing what they do, and 
And so you didn't have to go, you, after Glendale College, you didn't go to a music school? Or? No, I, I went down to Cal State Fullerton. Um, oh, they have a great yeah, uh, yeah, department. I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they do a lot of musical theater there, don't they? They do. I, I actually didn't do a whole lot of stuff down there because I was still doing stuff up here. And I started uh, with Opera La Carte at that time. So, Opera La Carte, I'm glad you <laughs> said that. Because Gilbert and Sullivan, so fabulous. And oh, they don't yeah. have that company anymore in London. It's so sad. It's so sad. But Opera La Carte's still going on. And, I, and what did they sing? All of the Gilbert and Sullivan? No. Um, at the time I left, which, you know, I was... I was I left in the in the 80s. I was there. Would you say that 80s, was a big break for you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Opera La Carte? So much experience. Um, I was there toward the beginning of the of the company, uh, and so at, at that time we only did three main operas. We only did the Mikado, Pirates of Penzance, and oh, Pinafore. That's it? But then when when he uh, when he mounted Patience, the show, the show Patience, then I got to originate that role, and just the tours and and constant being on stage was just absolutely fabulous. You have toured all over with the Pacific Corel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you've been to Russia and to Japan and uh, uh, Estonia, and how do you find the audiences? How do you find them reacting to you? Japan is the best. With, with the Roger Wagner Corral that has been touring to Japan ever since Roger had the corral. And then did you you sang solos then with them? Yes, right. Yeah, I yeah. See. But now it's it's run by his his daughter Janine Wagner and uh, the audiences there know all the songs and they sing along. Do they really? <laughs> we would leave after a performance <laughs> where we get, you know, always at least five encores and we would go out and there would be groups out in the uh, parking lot singing the songs to us Just in exactly the way the Japanese and them. the Japanese audience. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and I bet in Russia were they much more sedate? In Russia, when I was there, it was right after the Estonians had declared their independence oh, but they hadn't gotten it yet. I see. It was a very tense time, but it was a fabulous festival in Estonia with tons of choirs oh. and we did uh, we, we we were very well received there. So, so do you when you're singing with the chorale when you're singing do mm -hmm. you come out in front and sing in front or do you stand with the rest of the group? With, with the Roger Wagner chorale, it it's a small group. It's only 24. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's small. Yeah. The the original Roger Wagner chorale became the Los Angeles Master Chorale. Oh, that's how it is. But with Kurt, right. I'm mean, with Grant. With Grant. Grant yeah. And. Roger kept a small group of, oh. for his own, and have that you, continued being the Roger Wagner Corral. Have you sung with Grant Gershon? I many years ago. He actually used to play for me for auditions. Oh, how fabulous! <laughs> when he was, he's so great. Oh, right? he's wonderful. And, and so then, here you, with the big group you were with the small group, and we have you on opera. What about musical theater? Musical Oklahoma? theater is my favorite. Yes. <laughs> what yep. else? Uh, Oh, I, I just, I enjoy that so much. In fact, on this concert that we're doing uh, a, a week from tomorrow. Yes, let's talk about that when you finish, because does it <laughs> Yeah, on? yeah, because we have our choice to do what we wanted to do. And so we're doing a couple uh, on, opera ensembles with the quartet, but, but I'm going to do Till There Was You, uh. <laughs> always one of my faves, and Memory. <laughs> Oh, I, that brings tears to my yep, eyes. I yep. love that. Oh. When Betty Buckley sang that, I actually was crying. It's to die. And, oh, I know. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. so you get to choose. So tell us about that program. So this is our uh, uh, from Pasadena Presbyterian Church, which is my church job. I love the church. And oh, it is your church job. Yeah, I'm there every su every Sunday morning. And, and you sing in the uh, mm -hmm. or yeah. you lead? Yeah, the the. We have a, a quartet that we're the section leaders and the soloists. So it's oh. our responsibility to, you know, I make sure all the sopranos are. Where is it? That it's right on Colorado, Colorado and Madison. Uh, when during the Rose Parade, it goes right by. <laughs> Do they have a big organ? one of the best organs and we're so fortunate we have one of the best organists. And do you do you sing to the with the organ accompany you? We have we have organ and piano for concerts we have instrumentalists uh, and we for have full this orchestras. In this event you're gonna have the orchestra right? For the, no for this one this one will just be uh, piano Paul Floyd on piano who's 
amazing. Oh, great. And uh, it's it's just, just the four of us and the piano. Oh, so each person chooses, or you're choosing Yeah, what yeah, you we, want? Just, we just said, we just threw out what we wanted to do and we melded it together into a cohesive That's show. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, do you sing with the symphony? I, I, I sing with wh whoever <laughs> asks me when they ask me. <laughs> I get calls out of the blue. I don't audition anymore. It's mostly people who have heard me who somewhere. Let's let's go back to uh, to to Oklahoma. Yeah. And um, costuming and dancing and all that. I, I it's just uh, those kinds of things I got out of <laughs> out of again out of doing a show somewhere else. Someone saw me and oh. said. In this case, it was, we just lost our Lori, you know, oh, will you come and do it? <laughs> we need you. Can you sing it, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the other roles on opera, like uh, Lucia and Aida and Butterfly, Magic Flute, you sung all of those. I have. Magic Flute, I've done almost every soprano role, uh, and there are lots of them And, how, in and do you show. remember them? Once you've sung them, do you remember, like today, could you remember it? The, the arias, no problem. The arias you I do? could do. Yeah, yeah. It... Even we'll for like changed. Aida, you can remember mm. that. Yeah, Lucia uh, falling on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> crying, dying. Because I use Lucia if I if I have to do, if I have to do some you know some sort of audition you know that's you something that? I would use. I could see you, Lucia, with your white hair, all in white garbs and blood. All yeah, over yeah, you. yeah, and I always do it barefoot. <laughs> barefoot, perfect. I just enjoy it so much. A lot of those, I, I. Uh, I haven't done a full staged opera in a in a while. I wondered about that. How does it feel to not do a staged opera? It's so much easier to do. I I prefer to do concert operas uh -huh. and concert oratorios. I'm really that's really where my focus has been. It's so different, though. How do you conjure that feeling if you're doing like a what do you call it? Um, a, a, a staged stage production. Yeah. No, from it's a stage production to, to a, non a concert. Concert, yeah. It's the the concert version means you can concentrate so much more on the words and, and on voice. the music. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anything else. Acting, you mean moving right. around the stage. Whether someone's going to be where they or need to be, or right. yeah, something starts falling apart. So actually, the music could be better in that regard. I believe so. You don't get, you may, you may not get the emotion. Uh -huh, that's from, what I was thinking, yeah. But if if you've got the if you've got the singers and the conductor and the orchestra for it, you will. You will just I like so. Like um, uh, the song you're going to sing from Cats. Oh, memory, yes. <laughs> you don't need. You can conjure up your own um, exactly feelings, right? Yeah, that, yeah. That We're, poor old cat. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. So sad. <laughs> We're going to close the, this concert with the Rigoletto Quartet, uh -huh. and that will probably do a little bit of moving around. The tenor and I have both sung it before, and you know, uh, so we'll we'll probably get a little into it. But it it will mostly be about the music and making sure that people enjoy what they hear. And that's at Pasadena. Pasadena Presbyterian Church, five eight five, Colorado. Fantastic. <laughs> Judy, thank you for being thank with us. Thank you. And thanks for watching us today. Keep writing to J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com, and we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles.